Hey, what's going on, Daniel here. Welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to be reacting to this video that I found on CNBC Make It of a guy that relocated to Thailand from the United States on a salary of about $230,000 a year. Now, this is not to say that you need $230,000 a year to relocate outside of the United States or to anywhere else in the world, but this is just a testimonial to the fact that People can do this regardless of whether or not you make $230,000 or you make uh, $50,000 a year. You just need to find a lifestyle that works for you. But I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just going to react to this video and see what you think and what I think in real time. Now let's go. When I got to Bangkok for the first time, it just had that pulse. You've got this kind of street level city, which is your food vendors and your people running to work and taxis and motorbikes. There's now, there's something about Thailand that you should understand if you're thinking about moving to Thailand. Bangkok, Thailand is not a small city. In fact, it's one of the biggest cities in Asia. So if you're not a big city type of person, I would not recommend Thailand. I have a few friends who have been. In fact, a friend just came back from Thailand and they didn't quite like it as much as they had expected to. So keep this in mind before you decide to throw yourself into the Bangkok city life and Thailand as a whole. Then there's also sort of this sky city that's happening in these skyscrapers, fancy rooftop bars and restaurants, as well as interesting working spaces and malls. So you have the contrast of everything from the fancy Chanel store to the 20 cent pork on a stick skewer being drilled on the street. Now, this is true about a lot of big cities, especially in Asia and Latin America. There is this mesh or there's this, uh, you know, it's like a melting pot of I end luxury and just everyday life. For example, in Mexico City, you see the skyscrapers and people in suits and tie and just across the street you see like street food tacos and all of these things and i'm pretty sure it's the same in thailand as well you find all of this high-end luxury and you find street food like this which is great by the way my name is jesse schoberg i'm 41 years old and i relocated to bangkok thailand on about eight thousand dollars a month So Jesse is a 41-year-old expat who relocated to Bangkok, Thailand and makes about $230,000 a year. Now, my guess is that he's not doing this by being an employee, but by being an employer himself, by being something like a business uh, owner or something in tech. Let's see. And he's also been living abroad for 14 years. So this is not, uh, you know, a newbie into Dita Nomad world. Is I think what I would consider like a slow mad at this point because Dita Nomads are just, you know, traveling all over the place and going to different places, which is great, by the way. I highly recommend it. But as someone who's been traveling for so long, he's probably been to a lot of countries and he has, doesn't have that need to travel as often as possible. Ex especially if you're trying to run a business while you travel, you're going to have to have to set a base somewhere. And I think that's what he's doing right now. I'm an entrepreneur and a web developer. I've been working online for about 20 years. Yep. So he's an entrepreneur and a web developer, just like I said uh, it would be. So he's been working online <clears throat> for the last 20 years. That's a long time. That's even before D Dita Nomads became a thing. So let's see what type of business is it run. It has to be something really, uh, really lucrative. I currently run a company called Drop and Blog. I think a lot of entrepreneurs kind of went. Okay, so I think I've seen this before. Drop in blog is like a tool. I think it's like a web tool. It's not even a website. It's like a tool that allows you to import your WordPress blog into any website. So let's say you have your website anywhere. You can just install this tool on your website and it allows you to import your entire blog into an existing website. That's a really cool tool. I haven't used it myself, but I've read about it somewhere. And themselves to being nomads as well, because there is some sort of a seek of adventure and freedom that kind of comes from both sides. I decided that Thailand was a place that I would like to live when I first came here in 2015, the quality of life in Thailand compared to the United States, I'd say for 90% of things is much better. It's a very easy life compared to the US, as well as you're dealing with a bit of a currency arbitrage. See, that's the keyword there, currency arbitrage. And this is something that I want a lot of people to understand. 
when you go to a country, I mean, to a place like Southeast Asia, Latin America, you are giving yourself a disproportionate advantage to live a much better life than you would in the United States. Imagine paying anywhere from $2,000 to $3,000 for a one-bedroom apartment in a not-so-nice neighborhood in the U.S., but with that same amount, you can get... I mean, not with even with this amount, with a fraction of that amount, you'll be getting a very mu a much nicer apartment in the trendiest parts of town, in a place like Latin America, in Eastern Europe, or you know, in the Balkans, or in Southeast Asia. So this is something you need to understand when you're trying to become detail nomad. You know, you, you, one, you're not just doing it for doing its sake. You're not just traveling around and jumping places, but you're giving yourself an advantage, a disproportionate advantage to live a much better life. I live much better in Thailand than I did in the U.S. Well, I could afford a, a pretty nice life in the US it, it's just the, the level of services that you get here are completely blowing away what you get in the US so so again like you said I mean I've already mentioned this you're not I mean, making $230,000 a year, you can probably afford to live anywhere in the United States. But deciding to move to Thailand is just saying that, you know what, I can get way much more for what I would be living on in the United States, not just on, you know, things like the services, apartment, and all of this nice thing, security, but the level of service that you get elsewhere outside the United States, it's unmatched. Like, for example, if you go to Latin America, you will be treated like a king if you walk into pretty much any restaurant and not because they think oh you have money that's just the level of service for everyone it doesn't matter if you're rich if you're poor i live in a one bedroom service department i pay two thousand seven hundred dollars a month we're in a very trendy district and my fiance and i both live here wow $2,700 a month. Again, like I said, this guy can probably afford to live anywhere in the U.S. It just goes to show you that, you know, life outside the U.S. sometimes, it may not necessarily be cheaper, but you will get way more in terms of like peace of mind and just, you know, life, you know, your lifestyle in general. You get way much more in other aspects of your life than you would, in a, you know, in some other aspects as well. It includes quite a few amenities, including all utilities, electric, internet, as well as cleaning, and some laundry it, it's very full service and i find that removes a lot of my life admin time and allows me to be more productive and have a lot more free time that's one thing as a business owner sometimes you submit i mean you spend more on things not because you just want to throw money away but it buys you time in other places and in other aspects of your life like for example if you pay for a chef i mean that saves you time that you would otherwise spend in the kitchen or if you pay for you know a laundry service you don't have to do laundry by yourself. It buys you time and that time you can spend on something. So Jesse and Janine spend about $300 a month on groceries. Now that is pretty much, a, I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty good amount. And they spend $1,600 a month eating out. That's a lot of money to eat out. I'm assuming they don't cook a lot. Uh, so this is what happens when you don't cook a lot. You have to eat out. So $1,600 a month, Ugh, that's a lot. That's a lot. But, you know, they can afford it that you can get full meal Oof, that's that. freshly made of fresh ingredients for around a dollar fifty and you can't really do that anywhere in the states or europe that's true you can't do that in the states i mean one thousand six hundred dollars a month to eat out you'll be probably spending triple that triple that if you're trying to eat out in the u.s so you're still getting something back they're still you know saving way much more money by living in thailand even though the peers i guess spend a lot of money so i don't blame this dude at all i originally grew up in southern wisconsin uh, about an hour and a half north of chicago i grew up in a small town not too much trouble also not too much adventure and not too much drive to achieve exciting things so i always had the idea that i wanted to get out you see that's the thing about the united states a lot of people leave here and you cannot get sucked into the same routine every day. You know, you see the same people that you went to high school with, you have the same friends that you grew up with, and there's not so much excitement to it. You know, there's not so much going on. So I think making that decision to move out of the US or out of your comfort zone in general is just going to open up your mind in so many ways. A lot of people think that uh, Thailand is a scary place, but in reality, it's uh, a lot safer and a lot more calm and a lot more inviting than most other places in the world. 
You see, the truth is, a lot of places are much safer than the United States, but the media just make it seem like the rest of the world is this scary place that you shouldn't go to. Places, A lot of places in Latin America are much safer than most U.S. cities. I mean, I've lived in Baltimore for a long time, and it's scary to walk around as, I mean, in the city of Baltimore at night. And I do that pretty much everywhere else that I go, even in my home country that is considered not safe. And I'm out here in Albania, and it's it's honestly one of the safest places I've ever been to. I walk around at every hour of the day and nobody has ever like came up to me and you know try to put me in a precarious situation. So don't think that if you travel outside of your country, you're going to be unsafe because that is not the case. And look at the trains too. Like the metro is so clean. I mean, the interior we've seen like the ex exterior earlier, but look at the interior. Like everyone just seems so organized and everything looks clean. This is the kind of stuff that you will not get in New York City. Like if you've ever taken the metro, Metro New York City, you know it's a complete shit show. Like it's a mess. Um, it's one of the worst in the world. Even Mexico City has a better metro, you know, metro system than you know than New York City. So uh, again, this goes to show that a lot of things or a lot of places are not as bad as you may think. I met my fiance Janine in the Philippines. Uh, she was living there and is born there. Uh, she was working for a startup, and we kind of hit it off. We're planning to have our wedding in Phuket later this year. Now, again, I have to mention that dating is something that a lot of people find, you know, as one of the upsides of traveling abroad or living abroad. Now, a lot of people think, oh, because you can't get a girl in the U.S., you're going abroad to date. That's not the case. The thing is, a lot of people that you meet abroad, they have their own lives. You're not just going there because you're some rich American and you want to sway them. No, they have their own lives. Like, for example, in this case, Janine, like he said, is, I mean, she was working for a startup chances are she was making good money maybe not as much as he does but at least she has her own life so this is one of the things one of the reasons why i think you travel one you get access to you know the best life the best lifestyle and also you might meet someone that you truly love someone that you care about who has all these cultural values who you know values family friendships and all of these things that you probably don't get in the western world where everyone is just uh so concerned about work 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 so put that in mind if that's one of the reasons why you want to travel by the way they already had this wedding i follow this guy on instagram and i see that he had a wedding a few uh weeks ago so that's uh just to connect that and that wedding was good i mean I was seeing the Instagram stories. I think some of you know my friends were there as well. Uh, some of my friends that I follow on social media, of course. I find living outside of the States uh, a bit more interesting. It's fascinating to learn about different cultures and have authentic foods around the world, as well as just uh, interact with different people with different ideas. I find the States to be a bit complicated the last few years, and it doesn't really feel like it's getting better. That's true. I mean, a lot of people find the United States as a complicated uh, place to live in, especially in the last couple of years, myself included. And, you know, traveling abroad just gives you a better uh, way to explore your, you know, to live your life and to explore the world and to meet new people with different ideas. And the thing is, when you travel, you're never going to return as the same person. So I'm just going to, you know, keep this really short here. But travel is something that you should consider if you want to live a better life, if you want to to have access to you know experiences and to make friends all across the world and I can't keep I just can't reiterate this enough if you have any questions make sure to leave them down in the comments and if you have any need you know for any of the resources that I use check out the links in the description as well but uh, you know this is proof that you can do it and anyone can do it as well have some income get a job a remote job that gives you some money and you know just go all out and leave your dreams on your own terms this video has been helpful because they're subscribing if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Again, my name is Daniel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.